There's many different kinds of titles in the Power BI report. Making them dynamic makes it much easier to understand what you are currently looking at. Today I'm going to show you two different types of titles and how to make them dynamic. So let's look at the report. First of all, I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic text within a button. So let's say I click on baby care here. Down here below a button appears which has the name of the selected category in it. So when I select something different, the text of the button updates. And the second thing I want to show you is to have a dynamic title within a report page tooltip. So let's hover over one of these categories. Let's hover over mobile. And then when the tooltip appears, it also contains, here we go, it also contains the title mobile. And when I switch category, it changes again. But let's start with the button. So first of all, let's just add a blank button. I go to insert button blank. And then I just move it to where it should be. And now basically I need to add a button text. So let's turn on button text. But of course I don't want to have just a hard-coded name in there, but it should be dynamic, which means I will be using the conditional formatting function. In order to do this, I first need to create a measure because I need to add a measure to this, this field to, to make this title um, dynamic. What I want to do is I want to have my text measures sorted or combined into a specific table. This is just for best, best practice and it's, um, it's easier for you to also find them later on. Let's create a new table. I go to Home, click Enter Data, and then I want to name this new table Text Measures. I click Load, which adds the new table to the data model. And now I can create all my text measures as part of this new table. Let's just wait until it's loaded and once this is done, I move over to the fields list. I don't know why it's taking that long. Okay, perfect. So in the new table text measure, I right click and I select new measures and then we want to give a name to this new measure and it could be Let's call it button text because that's actually what it will be used for. It will be used for this button down there. Equals. And then let's think what should be shown in there. Basically, I want to show what has been selected in this visual. So I want to have selected value. And then I also need to see what category what dimension is actually inside the visual and this is actually groups from the business units table. When I close this the measure has been created now I can add it to the button text. So in the button text I click on the symbol for the conditional formatting and then I need to select fields value and then navigate down to my text measures table and select button text and confirm with OK. So let's see if this already works. When I click on this category, the button text changes. So, so far, this looks OK, but if I don't select anything, now, if I don't select anything, it's still, it's still there. What's missing is this drill by country text, the one I have in the original button. So let's just add this to the measure. Select the measure again. And then I want to add an additional condition saying that um, I want to add some text and it should be drill. And after drill, I want to have the 
the name right I need to add like this also and in the end I also need some more text and it should be by country confirm with enter and then let's see what happens there's a space missing but other than that this is actually already working working fine let's add this space in here before the word buy I need an additional space and now I have a fully dynamic button showing exactly the dimension which has been selected of course the formatting of my new button isn't as nice as the original button but um, there's a different article in the Zebra BI knowledge base showing how you can dynamically format your buttons your button style so I will keep it like this for today and we'll go and look at the dynamic title of the, of the tooltip. Let's first jump over to the tooltip page and remove what's already in there because we want to start from scratch. So I delete, delete this and of course also here in order for this to work I need a measure. So let's go back to the text measures table and create a new measure and it could be called, let's call it tooltip tool title. And it should also show what has been selected in the visual. So I would go again for selected value, selected value, and it's the group from the business unit table. Close it, enter, and then you can add a multi-row card visual and then add this visual just to this multi-card row or add the measure to the visual. Let's add it here and resize it and move it to the very top to the location where I want to see, see the title. Add the tooltip title measure and right now it is blank because basically right now I'm on the tooltip page and I haven't selected a group. But when I go back to the landing page and hover over the visual, we should see that now it shows mobile in the tooltip title. So that works perfectly fine. But let's see one more thing because this tooltip page we're actually using on several pages. We also use it on this page. And when we look at this and hover, you can see that the title doesn't match the actual category of the visual. I'm now hovering over tablets and the title of the tooltip shows mobile. So something must be wrong in here. Also the title doesn't change when I hover down and when I'm on electronics, it doesn't show anything. The reason is that in this visual, in the category, as you can see here, I have division and business unit and my title measure only works on group. And when we go and see what the hierarchy of the business units looks like, we have divisions on top and then we have the group and then we have the business unit. So basically we need to create a measure that works for all three levels of the hierarchy. So let's go back to the tooltip title measure, get rid of this and adjust the formula. It's important when you do this that you check the conditions of, um, or you check the hierarchy from bottom to top. You will see why in a second. So first I want to see if on the bottom we have the business unit. So we want to see if the Business, use, business unit has been filtered. So I want to say if has one filter and then we add the business unit business unit from the business unit table. So if this has been filtered then I want to show what actually has been selected for the business unit. I just jump to a new row to make it nice and clean so result if true should be 
selected value, selected value from the business unit. But if no business unit has been selected, then I need to check one level above in the hierarchy. So I want to add an additional if statement and it's more or less the same but for the different for the next level so I want to check if has one filter and then I want to check this for the group then if it has been filtered we want to show which one selected value of the group which one has been selected and then there's only one more level in the hierarchy so let's do exactly the same but for the uh, for the division if has one filter division then we want to show selected value of the division and basically now we can just close this formula because there's nothing else that could be happening. We only have three levels and we have covered all three levels in the hierarchy. I confirm with enter and now let's see what happens when I hover over any of the rows in this visual. It works for electronics, it works for tablets and it also of course works down here and if we go back to the landing page, because we are now using the same tooltip page, we need to make sure that the tooltip title works for all the source pages. So it also needs to work when I'm on the landing page. And as you can see, this still works perfectly fine. And yeah, well, that would, that would be two samples, two different types of dynamic titles. Of course, there's many more possibilities, there's more options. You could add titles in different places. Um, but in general, the way to do it and the way to write your measures is always like the one I showed you just now. And um, of course, as always, this file can be downloaded from the Zebra BI knowledge base in order for you to better understand how this was done. And of course, also make sure to look at all the other videos in the knowledge base to get more Power BI tips and tricks.